In this video, I'm going to differentiate between the infantile type and the adult type of the coarctation of the aorta. So the infantile type is most commonly associated with preductal coarctation, while the adult type is associated with postductal. And what these terms means is that with preductal, the coarctation is proximal to the ductus arteriosus. So the name pre ductal is given to it. While with the adult type, the coarctation is distal to the ductus arteriosus, which in adults turn in ligamentum arteriosus. And so since the uh, coarctation is distal to the ligamentum arteriosus, the name postductal is now given to it. But both of these terminologies are arbitrary terms. And the reason I'm saying they are arbitrary is that usually the origin of coarctation is the same, but depending on how the aortic arch grows, the position relative to the ductus arteriosus can change. And so usually in adult form, the coarctation is distal to the ligamentum arteriosus, while in infantile type, it's proximal to the ductus arteriosus. Now, because of the coarctation, there is problem with the blood flow as a consequence of which the left ventricle will have to work harder and will undergo the hypertrophy. So both of these type of coarctation are associated with left ventricular hypertrophy. In addition, due to the blockage of the aorta here, due to the coarctation, there would be aortic regurgitation in both types of coarctation shown right here. So aortic regurgitation and left ventricular hypertrophy are the two features that are seen with coarctation of aorta. Now there are other characteristics that is seen with the infantile or the adult type, and I would like to discuss those next. So with the infantile type, which is usually associated with the Turner syndrome and has patent doctor, uh, ductus arteriosus, there would be cyanosis in the lower extremities. So let's just repeat what I told you here. So it's associated with patent ductus arteriosus. It's also seen in Turner's disease. So patients with Turner syndrome has have infantile type of the coarctation of aorta. And then because now there is shunting of blood from the right ventricle into the descending aorta and right ventricle have deoxygenated blood. So now deoxygenated blood will go to the lower extremities as a consequence of which there would be now cyanosis of the lower extremities versus adult type which is associated with the bicuspid aortic valve and then there is also disparity in blood pressure between the upper and lower extremities so unlike the infantile type where there is blood that will be shunted from the patent ductus arteriosus here we don't have any more patent ductus arteriosus and so there is problem with the flow of blood from the aortic arch into the descending aorta so therefore most of the blood will go to the upper extremities so therefore there would be high blood pressure in the upper extremities by lo but low blood pressure in the lower extremities and so that's what i mean by disparity in blood pressure between the upper and lower extremity because in upper extremities there is high blood pressure while in lower extremities there is low blood pressure and weak femoral pulses and then finally there is rib notching that is seen on x-ray and this is due to the development of the collateral circulation from the intercostal vessels so here you can see that the intercostal vessels have connected the vessels from the upper extremity to the descending aorta so now via the upper extremity vessels the intercostal vessels can connect to the descending aorta and so via this collateral circulation there is one way to bypass the coarctation that is shown right there but then due to the development of this collateral circulation on x-ray you will see the rib notching is shown right there and another one right here and then here is another example and that concludes our discussion of the difference between the infantile as well as adult type of the coarctation of the aorta